Hey guys, it is um, Monday, June 26th. The time is 1510 New York local time. And in this video, I want to uh, talk about intermarket relationships, what we saw in the market today, uh, the mistakes that I made uh, in day trading today. Um, there were many. Um, was not my best trading day. Uh, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you the things that I think that I missed. Um, I'm going to tell you what to look out for in the future. The following are going to be uh, my opinions, obviously. So if you're watching this and you think it's horseshit, that's totally fine. Um, if you follow uh, Michael Huddleston or Inner Circle Trader, uh, I'm going to direct you to ICT Mentorship Core Content Month 10, Relative Strength Analysis, Accumulation, and Distribution. I'm specifically going to reference you to about the four minute mark of that video. I will link to that. Uh, I'll pin it as the top comment. Um, so what we saw today was a divergent marketplace. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig into intermarket relationships, why I believe that you need to be watching multiple markets. Um, and I'm not you know, if you follow if you follow Michael, if you follow Inner Circle Trader, I'm not just pulling this out of my ass. He does talk about this. Uh, again, I'm going to direct you to ICT Mentorship Core Content Month 10 Relative Strength Analysis. So, the first, you know, the first thing that you need to to understand is that, in my opinion, you need to watch multiple markets. So there are four stock indices. You probably only need to watch three. I watch the Russell 2000 as well because, again, I can only trade on my cash account, the Micro Russell. Um, I watch a number of different Forex futures. I watch the three metals. I watch the two energies. And I've added on the 10-year bond so that I just have two different bonds to look at, the 10-year and the 30-year. And then the dollar index is always going to be there, king dollar. So what we saw with the dollar index today um, is that we just had a consolidation down here um, at around the 102 spot 692 area. We're sitting with our new week opening gap that is above. And the dollar index has not shown a willingness uh, as of yet to get back up into this new week opening gap. The fact that it has not gone lower and formed this balanced price range would lead me to believe that the dollar index, I'm still thinking that the dollar index wants to go higher and that I was probably a day early on this. What we saw in the marketplace today was a divergent marketplace. Um, two of our stock indices are down, two of our stock indices are up. Um, Forex, Australian dollar has been our bullish laggard or our bearish leader, either way you want to look at that. In terms of the metals, um, copper has actually been down on the day. So if you watched my ICT tape reading video number eight last night, I did say that copper was probably going to punch through these lows, which it eventually did do. Um, and in terms of our two energies, crude oil has not shown a willingness to go higher that natural gas has. So natural gas has been our bullish leader on the energies. In terms of the bonds, about the same. 30 year and the 10 year um, are about the same. Whenever you're looking at the marketplace, and this is a big mistake, I, I, your natural inclination if you're looking at multiple markets is you're going to want to short the thing that has gone up the most and you're going to want to long the thing that has gone down the most, which is really the opposite of how you should be thinking. Uh, Michael talks about this, uh, Inner Circle Trader. He is, it is something that he talks about. Um, when you have a model, okay, so you know that I have a trading model that I implement, that I follow. Um, if you're looking to go short, you want to short the instrument that has already shown you a willingness to go down. So for example, today the NASDAQ had shown a willingness to go down. If, um, if you're looking to go long on the model, you want to long the instrument that, and I'm just going to pull these orders, these aren't going to get filled. Um, you want to long the instrument that has shown a willingness to go up. And what does that mean? In layman's terms, or just simply speaking, it means that you want to long the bullish leader, uh, you want to short the bearish leader, and usually in the marketplace, um, if the dollar index is directional, so if the dollar is is moving clearly in one direction, it's going to basically influence all markets. So the dollar, the dollar, the dollar index is going to influence everything. King dollar. 
And when the when the dollar index is very directional, all of the all of the markets are going to pretty much move in one direction. Um, but one, some of them are going to be relatively stronger than others. So, however, when the dollar index, like it was today, um, June 26, when the dollar index is non-directional, you're going to see a divergent marketplace like this, and it's not a market condition that we've seen in in a few weeks. Um, and again, I think I think some of you are are going to take. Um, you're not going to like this video very much, and I totally understand that, but it is what it is. Um, I'm not here to lie to you. Um, I'm not here to tell you that uh, you know trading is always easy. You, In my opinion, this is just my opinion, the overall marketplace today was an advanced marketplace. It, it was something that you need to be aware of your intermarket relationships and then applying that information. Um, it was it was something that I missed. I thought that the dollar index was going to pop off and go through this new week opening gap today. It's probably going to end up doing that tomorrow. So I think I was probably one day off on this. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna direct you to ICT mentorship core t core content month ten relative strength analysis. Um, essentially, what you need to know going forward is a rule of thumb is that you want to short. You want to short things that have already shown a willingness to go down or short things that have not shown a willingness to move higher when other things are moving higher. Um, you want to be looking at your different markets against each other and, and look for your relative strength leaders and laggards, which that's that's a pretty traditional concept. That really shouldn't be, um, that should not be a super controversial statement. Um, I think what is controversial is that some of you, and I know that LP Trades, who watches this, is going to be in this camp, and he and I are not going to agree. I have tried. I've tried everything on, under the sun, and his last comment is pretty disrespectful, and I'm going to make it. It's going to make it sound like um, I have not tried everything under the sun, and that I do not want to succeed at trading. Um, of course, I want to succeed at trading. Um, but trading is very difficult, and I want to have multiple streams of income. So there's your answer to that last comment. Um, I had a tough day today. I had a very tough day today. Um, and the reason why I had a tough day today, in my opinion, so when I have a tough day uh, and I'm looking at, I immediately go into analysis mode. So the marketplace is always correct. If you miss something, it's because you missed something, not because the marketplace was incorrect. As you know, I believe that these markets are 100% automated, driven by trading algorithms. If I had to hasten a wild guess today, today was a little bit of a rebal what I would call a rebalancing. The Russell 2000 has been very beat up compared to your other indices. Tech has been very strong to compare to your other indices. I would say this is, a, this is probably a little bit of a rotation out of tech, a little bit of a rebalancing. Get these stock indices a little bit back into line with one another. That's just my speculation, I'm not saying that that is the truth. What I do know is that if you were looking for a short in the marketplace today, um, you needed to be looking at your intermarket relationships. And the best short came here, obviously, with the NASDAQ. It came in during your silver bullet time frame, AM, AM silver bullet right here. Um, I was already... I was already disinterested in the market today. I was already pretty beat up from the overnight session, so I did not take it. But there was your silver bullet right there on the NASDAQ. And in order to see it and in order to be on the NASDAQ, um, you, need to be, you need to be watching multiple markets. So no, yes, I have, I have tried to just trade one market. I've, had, I've tried to look at only one market. Uh, it doesn't work, in my opinion. Um, you think, you know, I totally understand the idea that you need to hone your focus on something, and I agree with that in principle. But you have to look at your intermarket relationships and look for your leaders and your laggards and then pick which if you're going to go short based on a mathematical model which is what I do you want to make sure that you're picking the um, the weaker the, the instrument that has already shown a willingness to go down today that was the NASDAQ um, the NASDAQ was the was the bearish leader today um, I'm not sure when that became apparent you know, other than just looking at your your daily change percentages here on the right, you can also look for your uh, breaks of structure. 
you can look for market structure and and Michael talks about this uh, in the pinned the pinned comment relative strength analysis so you can look at your market structure and see which instrument appears you know they're all correlated with the dollar okay everything is going to be correlated with the dollar you have to watch the dollar index it's it's guiding the entire marketplace okay some of the the correlations with Forex to the dollar are pretty exact right because these are basically just paired against the dollar the correlation with the metals is a little bit weaker okay correlation with crude oil and natural gas a little bit weaker correlation with the bonds a little bit weaker correlation with the stock indices a little bit weaker but the influence that the dollar index has on everything is is a fundamental factor to, to what makes these markets move and so you do need to you do need to be watching the dollar index at least at a minimum if you're if you're only going to look at the S&P 500 the ES at a minimum for your only intermarket relationship you've got to watch the dollar index I don't know how you would do it without watching the dollar index personally I believe that a proper salient analysis using ICT concepts I'm not pulling this out of my ass he talks about this is using your intermarket relationships looking at the market structure that each one is creating looking at just even your daily change percentages to get an immediate feel for which one is the bearish leader which one is the bearish laggard which one is not breaking structure which one is breaking structure um, so you can see we had a big divergence in the metals today right gold up basically flat copper copper a little bit down silver way up now obviously silver was pretty beat up to the downside divergent to the downside last week so we did expect a little bit of um, it was definitely possible, I should say, that that silver was going to have a rally, um, considering how much it's been beat up to the sell side. So um, I did try to short silver a couple times a day. I longed it later and then made some of the losses back on silver. Um, but that was a mistake of mine. And the reason why I've gotten away with that mistake uh, last week and the week prior to that is because all of our markets were basically moving in harmony with the dollar index. And so I wasn't really factoring in, as I should have been, our intermarket relationships and our relative strength, leaders and losers. So something going forward, if you're going to be trading, trading one of ICT's models, is to look for your intermarket relationships. Um, look for which one is leading, which one is lagging. Um, when the dollar is moving, which one of these products is reticent, doesn't really want to move, even though the dollar is moving. Uh, when the dollar is in a daily consolidation like this, it's going to allow the marketplace to, the dollar index is not going to smother everything. Okay, If the dollar is really directional, everything's, everything else is going to be smothered, basically smothered. But when the dollar index is consolidating like this, it will allow a divergent marketplace like this. So anyways, uh, I just wanted to make this video. Um, on some key mistakes that I made today, not factoring in my relative strength analysis, uh, I've been getting away with that, and uh, I got I got burned by by not factoring in my relative strength analysis, trying to short the bearish leaders, trying to trying to long the bullish leaders. Um, that is something that burned me today. It's something that I will be looking out for in the future. Um, and by the way, even when your markets are all moving in harmony one of them is you know generally there's going to be a leader and there's going to be a laggard and so let's say the dollar index is is headed straight down so your risk assets are headed straight up you generally want to be you know focusing your contracts on the instrument that is showing the the most willingness to go up right the relative strength leader um, and from that point you then go and apply your you go and apply your normal trading model the relative strength analysis is not an entry and exit mechanism in and of itself. It's really just informing you which product is likely the best long, likely the best short, using the model that you're already using. So the relative strength analysis is not an entry exit mechanism in and of itself. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. Um, I will be back later, and you all have a good one.